know about that, Warner Amex, and have you had the chance to see any of them? Do you know what it is? <laughs> okay. Do you care? 24 <laughs> hours, it's a visual radio station, 24 hours, seven days a week, a satellite. Have you spoken with okay. manager? Oh, I'm just looking at the time. Oh, you have to. Absolutely. That's what I understand. How was it tonight? Feel good? It was, it was wonderful because it was the last gig and they're always real special. I had no idea that this was like in this. I thought that I was just coming in to talk to these people. Oh. So if I'm acting a little bit nervous, it's only because I had no idea. I just thought that we, we, we were just going to talk. But that's fine because... Sure. We, well, that's what we're doing. I just have to say this here because we're, you know, we're doing a casual kind of interview. We just needed to get your comments on Tom's homecoming here because it is pretty exciting for all the Gainesville folks. And, and you seem to enjoy it. How did that Yes, well, you I came a long way to get to Gainesville for this show. Um, I wanted to be here because it's uh, it's too bad for me that his tour is over because that means no more stop dragging my heart arounds for a while. And uh, I've been able to go out and just do two two concerts here, three concerts there, so I don't have to go through the like the pain of the road, but I get to go out and really have a lot of fun for a couple of days and I get to go home. So it's been real special for me and I'm real sorry that it's over. How did it first come together? What was the first song you sang with Tom? And did you know you'd sound as good as you do together before you sang the first song? I knew. Well, I knew because I'd been, uh, I was a really a big fan of Tom's for a long time, for years. And so I had already learned to sing with Tom long before I ever met him. As I had learned to sing with Don Hanley and as I had learned to sing with Lindsay, you know, over, over years, I just, I'm a mimic. So it was very easy for me to sing with him. And now it's real easy because we have sang live, and that's, if you can really sing live well together, that's very special. A lot of people don't don't make that transition from the studio to the stage. It works, working in all the improvisation that you get to do in a live situation, too. Yeah, that's well, that's what's neat about it, is that it goes by and it is over, but every time you learn. So what's in the plan for you now? You're off to Tom. Tom's going to take a break and get some recording and writing done. What's Stevie Nicks been doing? What's the immediate future? Back to L.A. and then what? I am recording with Scoot with Mac, and we're doing real well. We're about, I would say, like halfway through. It'll, now, they're all recorded. Everything is done. We just have to now decide what to do with them now that they're all recorded. Um, it's real nice, and it's going quickly. Um, I'm going to maybe go out and do a few concerts here and there somewhere. In November. Do you have plans for video or illustrating yeah. your music? Some yeah. Of your songs? Oh, I have all those plans. I've had them for years. Um, do you play yeah. an active role in the production of the videotapes, or do you leave that to another department? I will as of now. Good for because you. Because if you don't, it, uh, it isn't really what you wanted to see, which is for me, because I, I kind of envision my songs and I envision, I envision a lot of things, and if they don't hold up to my vision, then, I'm, then I can't do it, you know. So I guess I'm, I'm going to have to become more involved in it. Your songs lend themselves to visuals so, so much already. You being almost so too much. That's why it's hard because it's like there's such stories, you know. Are you afraid of interpreting it for the listener before they do, or does that bother you at all? Well, I'm afraid of other people's interpretations on my video. If that's, you know. I, you want you want it, even if it's a wonderful story that somebody makes up because I don't have the time to do it for a song of mine, then I'm going to have to at some point sit down and tell him exactly what that song was about and exactly why it was written and, and the story behind it before he writes something that is so far away from the meaning of Sarah or the meaning of dreams that I, I can't live with that. So I have, you know, I have. That's when I have to get involved, and I don't like to tell people what to do or anything. You know, I just want them to have fun. Doesn't work. It's terrible to see your work. Then you have to do it again. So you're off with Tom Petty now, and do you think you'll get together again? And did you did you feel this intense warmness that was on the stage and in the? I mean, the crowd was just really. You had to, I guess, from the stage you can feel it eight times as much as when you're in there with the crowd. What did it feel like to you up there? I mean, did you ever Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. <laughs> Um, it's real, it's real special, it's real, uh, it's like, it's like the rock and roll dream, you know, to dress up in black velvet and lace and walk on in the middle of a real intense happening rock and roll concert with a, with a, a person who is like a, you know, a really 
special kind of male artist that's, that has a real kind of kind of romantic uh, theatrical approach to rock and roll along with his real hard rock and roll things. He's real, see it's really easy for Tom and I to be theatrical on stage because we both like it. If you have one of, one of if you have a duet and one of the persons isn't into being theatrical, you can't do it because they think you're stupid. So, but if the other person also, you know, practiced with a hairbrush, pretending it was a microphone in front of the mirror to get their vibe down, uh, it's wonderful because you say, oh, here's another person that is just as crazy as I am. Makes and sense. it's okay if I sing a line in his mic because he'll, he will know what a cool thing that was to do. New world. It's an, old it is world, an, it is a new world. It's a new world with an old world. On yeah. the old King's Road. You sounded great, and I thank you for the time. Thank Stephen you. Nerdall, thank it. you. Do you have a word for MTV viewers, even though you haven't seen it? Cable and rock and roll, you think it'll work? I think it's the neatest, absolutely coolest thing I ever heard of because I would love to sit and watch television and watch everybody sing all the songs that they do because I never get the time to see anybody. So I would love it. Nice to hear. I really would. That's not, I mean, I don't, no, I'm not. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> no, when you're, you know, when you're in Australia, they have a lot of that. And so when you're on the road over there, you don't know anybody. And it's like you just turn on your TV, and there's a lot, a lot of video radio. And I always thought, what a great idea this is because people love to, to do, you know, create their fantasies and do them along to their songs. And they love to have good sound behind them. And if you actually make a video, of course you're going to make sure the sound is good. So you're going to do a whole theatrical presentation to people that doesn't get boring. No, it's it's, it becomes then, you know, like that very favorite song that you listen to time and time again. And people go, if you play that once more time, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> and it's like, you, you, but you don't care. You just keep playing it. That's, I think, that's what video can do to music. Because to see the, to see the grandeur behind the sound that you hear, uh, it's, it's some, have, some have expressed a fear that it might keep people away from concerts. I don't think it will. Well, you know, if it does, then that's where it's all supposed to go. Then yeah. we just do better videos. Yeah, just work it out. You know, and we can always do a club for experience. Club dates are fun too. It's nice to see somebody in a different situation. You doing those? You doing some club dates? Oh, you never know. I may be. Yeah. <laughs> just walk in. It's a gator you. grooming. <laughs> I don't know where that is. Thank you. I'm really, I had no idea that this is the thing I touched on. Well, you caught your surprise. <laughs> you caught your surprise. I had to it. tell you, at some point I had to say, I just want you to know, I had no idea that. Tell uh, Mr. Pittman, hello. I'm, uh, I will be sure. Thank he's you. just so jealous of my incredible home movie that I made that <laughs> nobody really? believed in except me and Gordon. As we carried all this stuff to the place oh. every day, you know, and nobody else. I'll, I'll get this to Tony Please. and they'll see what's, what's going to be. Okay. okay. I would really love to see um, Wild Thing because I mean, I never get to see music on one stage. Yeah, you are. We'll, we'll make sure that you get to see it. You have, okay. what, what's your home here? Um, I'm, in, I'm in Los Angeles, but you can get. I'll get it to Tony. Yeah, right to Tony. I'll get my information because my wallet's in there. Thank you, my ride. I'll come right back. And I'm a hard face.